Happy New Year and welcome to 2021. We made it. We survived the year of visual clarity 2020. Thank goodness that is over. My name is Dr. Richard Untune and I want to thank you for tuning in to our video healthcare class. For the last 21 years, I've done weekly healthcare classes in my office in an effort to educate you on topics that I feel would be important for building your health from the beginning to the end uh, so that you can recapture your youth and uh, make your body function better. After all, we want everybody's body to function better. Um, if you're having difficulty with your body currently not functioning better, I want to offer you five simple things that you can do that are absolutely free in an effort to help you obtain better health throughout the course of 2021. 2021, the year of new beginnings. We got through 2020, so we want to start everything over. We had 10 months of sitting quietly, uh, twiddling our thumbs, trying to figure out how to move our lives forward. Hopefully you made some realizations. Hopefully you changed some habits. Hopefully you got rid of things that you don't need. Hopefully you've created new habits that you do need. Uh, hopefully you're exercising. Uh, hopefully you're are taking better care of yourself quality-wise. And so I want to give you five simple steps that you can incorporate into your life to begin the new year off. These are the five simple steps that I would like for you to consider for the year 2021, the year of new beginnings. Everybody has New Year's resolutions. These are things that we usually run out of very quickly. We lose sight of them and we fall off the wagon, so to speak, within the first 30 days. These are things that you can do every single day. And the nice part is, is as you incorporate one, you can add to it any of the other four. And as you get in the habit of doing all five of them on a regular basis, I promise you, this time next year, your health will be completely different than it is now for the better. So the first thing that we would like for you to do is do the thing that God made free. It's called breathing. Now, man is doing everything they can to monetize your ability to breathe. Believe it or not, man is going through the efforts of creating breathing machines, machines that produce oxygen. Perhaps you've seen the commercials, and it's for the senior citizens so that they don't have to drag around a big con metal container of oxygen and have those weird things coming up their back and around their face and up their nose in an effort to breathe. It's free. You can take advantage of it anytime you want, yet they feel that you need a machine. And it's okay because Medicare will pay for that machine. Now, if you're having difficulties with your breathing, I will ask you to stay with this video until the end because I'd like to give you some advice on what you can do to change your breathing and change your health. But the first thing is to breathe properly. Now, most people, believe it or not, breathe backwards. You say, well, how is that possible, Dr. Rick? I breathe through my nose and out through my mouth, or I breathe in my mouth and out through my nose, or I breathe in through my nose and out through my nose, breathe in my mouth and out through my mouth. How could I possibly breathe backwards? Well, it's not about how you take the air in and out. It's what you do with that air. Yes, it's what you do with that air. Now, most people, over the course of the last 21 years of doing this healthcare class, the first thing we do is we check on our people breathing properly. And I would guarantee you that 90% of the people that come to my classes don't breathe properly. The first way to help your body function better is to check to make sure that you're breathing properly. Most people are chest breathers. Chest breathers are breathing backwards. Well, if you're not breathing through your chest, well, where should you be breathing? You should be breathing through your belly, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate a chest breath or two so that you can get a sense of how you may already be breathing. You sit up straight in the chair that you're sitting in, put a hand on your chest, Put a hand on your belly, and when you breathe in, you see which hand moves. So I'm going to do it backwards to start out with. I'm not very good at that because I don't breathe that way. I breathe the proper way. But everything moved above the diaphragm. Everything moved up. See my shoulders move, you see my chest puff out, you see my belly get pulled in, you see the diaphragm sit stable. Well, your diaphragm helps you process emotions. When you breathe properly, you're constantly evaluating your diaphragm moving up and down, and what you're doing is you're actually 
processing your emotions, the good emotions and the bad emotions, so that you don't store those emotions. Trapped emotions lead to joint pains. Trapped emotion lead to other health issues. We don't want you to trap your emotions, so we want you to belly breathe. So properly belly breathe, watch my chest, doesn't move at all. You say, Dr. Rick, but that's not very attractive. Got that big belly popping out. I'm going to ask you to get over yourself because at the end of the day, if you have a big belly, you do what I ask you to do, by the end of the year, you won't have that big belly anymore. And then you can properly belly breathe because you won't be worried about your belly. But breathing into your belly, breathe out. My chest never moves. Diaphragm moves down. Belly contents move out of the way. That process massages your digestive organs. I'm going to exaggerate it. Get a pumping action. That pumping action helps you to better digest your food, better assimilate your food, get better energy out of your food simply by breathing properly, okay? We want you to breathe properly. Breathing properly, if you don't breathe properly, your brain doesn't get enough oxygen. And when your brain doesn't get enough oxygen, your brain doesn't function very well. You don't have enough energy. The second thing that you can do, which also helps your brain function better, is to drink the right amount of water. Most people have heard you need eight eight-ounce glasses of water a day. Well, eight eight-ounce glasses is 64 ounces. 64 ounces is good for somebody that weighs, get this, 100 pounds. I'm pretty sure everybody listening or watching this video weighs more than 100 pounds. Therefore, you need more than your eight eight ounce glasses of water a day. Makes sense. If you weigh more, you need more. If you weigh 100 pounds, you would need your eight eight ounce glasses. If you weigh 150 pounds, you need three quarters of a gallon. That's 12 eight ounce glasses or three quarters of a gallon. You weigh 200 pounds, good for you. You need a gallon of water every single day. You weigh more than 200 pounds, you need more than a gallon of water every day. Okay, I used to have a friend that would carry a gallon of water with him every single day, and at the end of the day, it had to be empty. Now, if he wasn't drinking very much throughout the day, at the end of the day, guess what he had to do? He had to pound the whole rest of whatever was left in that gallon in order for him to get the right amount of water. Now, you say, but Dr. Rick, I don't drink that much water. I'm going to be running to the bathroom too many times. I can't do that. Initially, you're going to need about three weeks for your body to adapt to the new amount of water. When it does, a funny thing's going to happen. Your metabolism is going to be begin to increase. And when it begins to increase, a funny thing's going to happen. You're going to lose weight. I call it the water diet. When you drink enough water, your body gets enough water. It metabolizes things more efficiently because water is the rate-limiting uh, ingredient that helps the Krebs cycle turn food into energy. And when you have enough water, you produce more energy. And when you produce more energy, your metabolism's faster. And when your metabolism's faster, <gasps> you lose weight. It's a wonderful gift that you can give yourself at the beginning of the new year. And it requires you to drink enough water. So we got breathing properly. We've got drinking enough quality water. One quart for every 50 pounds you weigh every day. Number three, the third thing that you need to do is you need to eat quality food not completely refined and processed, or what I call crap food. The completely refined and processed food is what the Food and Drug Administration wants you to eat, which leads to heart disease, leads to diabetes, leads to cholesterol issues, leads to cancer, leads to any other health problem that you could possibly have. It's a result of eating the completely refined and processed, what I call the crap food. Where do you find the crap food? You find it in the aisles. When you walk into a grocery store, the first thing you run into is your fruits and your vegetables, made by nature, because that's what God put in the Garden of Eden. That's what we're supposed to be eating. Eat lots of fruits and vegetables, as much as you want. You'll be fine. When you turn the corner and go around the corner, the next thing that's available is your meat section, okay? Eat the meats. You can eat your beef, you can eat your chicken, your poultry, your turkey, you can eat pork, you can eat lamb. Eat all of it in 
sparingly amounts, okay? You don't want to eat huge sums of it, okay? But I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You need to eat at least one serving of red meat every week. Why? Because there's an essential amino acid called methionine that your body will not produce unless you acquire it through your food. And that essential amino acid, methionine, is only found in red meat. Now, if you come from India or any of the other countries that are primarily vegan, all right, and you've come from that lineage and you've always eaten that way, okay, your body's already adapted to extracting methionine from those food sources. But if you grew up in this country and you grew up on meat and potatoes like our lineage has for as long as this country's been around, the 1600s, 1700s, okay? At the end of the day, you're not equipped to manufacture methionine, which means you're going to need to eat one serving of red meat every week. That would be ideal, okay? As you continue around the grocery store, then you get to dairy. I'm going to tell you to stay away from cow's milk because cow's milk is meant for <gasps> cows. Exactly. Cow's milk is meant for cows. And goat's milk, huh, that's meant for goats. Now, human milk, which is mother's breast milk, is meant for babies. Okay? It's a good source of nutrition. All right? challenge that we have in this country is, is that most mothers don't breastfeed or don't breastfeed long enough for their child to develop a healthy immune system. Most mothers are not taught how to properly breastfeed when they're at the hospital having just given birth. They leave with a party bag gift of all sorts of formulas and it's just easier to put it in a bottle and stick it in the baby's mouth than it is to, you know, pump some out of your breast or let the baby feed from your breast directly. Okay? If you haven't been properly taught how to do that, I would encourage you to take the time because that's where your baby's immune system comes from, is mother's breast milk. Now, I had a little experiment that went on naturally in my office a number of years ago. I had two really good friends get pregnant at roughly the same time and their babies were born less than a week apart. And what was interesting was one mother breast breastfed and the other mother used formula. Well, I watched these children grow up over the course of my practice and the one that breastfed the child was lean, was uh, very energetic, uh, didn't have any weight management issues, uh, had an affinity for natural food as opposed to the one that used formula. Their child had weight management issues, had obesity issues by the time they were five, and uh, had some interesting food allergies and uh, some other food-related uh, problems as a result of what? They're getting all the completely refined and processed food. So we want to start your child's off. Uh, the, the, the best opportunity for your child to have good health would be to feed them breast milk, okay? As we move through the dairy aisle, okay, the cheeses, the eggs, okay? Uh, people say, well, eggs are high in cholesterol, Dr. Rick. Yes, they are high in cholesterol. And if you take an egg and you incubate it underneath a chicken's butt, what eventually happens? That's right, it turns into a chicken. The egg, nothing's added, nothing's taken away, but the egg itself, made of protein and fat, combines together to become a chicken. Where are the carbohydrates? That's right, there are no carbohydrates in an egg. It's protein and it's fat, okay? I personally eat two eggs for breakfast every day, and I've been doing that 20 years, 25 years, and guess what? My cholesterol's never been above 160, okay? Ideally, that's not very healthy. Ideally, it needs to be about 25 points higher, okay? But for those of you who are on cholesterol-suppressing medications, your statins, uh, newsflash, when you take statin medications for too long, a funny thing happens. You develop diabetes. Yes, a side effect of taking statin medications is developing diabetes. Maybe you already have diabetes. So you're taking the diabetes medication, you're taking the cholesterol medication, chances are you're also taking blood pressure medication, and chances are you may already be taking autoimmune uh, medication, anti-inflammatory medications for things like arthritis and, and those types of things. If you're tired of taking all those medications, continue to follow what I'm talking about. So we've got proper breathing, we've got proper water, we've got proper food. What's number four? Number four would be proper sleep. You know we have over 70 million Americans that do not get 
proper amounts of sleep. They have trouble falling asleep, staying asleep, or waking earlier than they would like, and they just don't have the energy that they would like to have, okay? Due to a thing that's very, very natural, called sleeping, okay? One of the reasons that we set ourselves up for having difficulty sleeping is because what you're watching this on, maybe a tablet, maybe an iPad, maybe uh, an Android, maybe your smartphone, um, maybe your computer, okay? We spend entirely too much time in front of these electronic devices, all right? We're all hearing about 5G and how 5G, the towers that are going up, may have contributed to why we had COVID-19, etc. Maybe you're concerned that the EMFs associated or the electromagnetic frequencies associated with these devices create problems. They do create problems. We need to spend less time. The challenge is, is that you get, your body gets overstimulated from spending time in front of your tablet. So when it's time to go to sleep, your brain won't shut off. Why? Because it's been overstimulated the whole day. Okay? So I'm going to ask you, two to three hours before you go to bed, make sure you've stopped eating food. Make sure that you turn off your devices. Make sure that you do something creative. Maybe start some writing. Maybe read something. Maybe do a little bit of both. Maybe talk to your spouse. Maybe talk to your children. Whatever the case happens to be. But you need to stimulate your brain less by not using your devices. When you go to bed at night, don't have your cell phone anywhere near your head. Don't have any electronic devices in your bedroom. You have a television in your bedroom? That's a problem. Take the television out of the bedroom. You'll sleep better. You'll have better relations with your spouse. Promise you. Take the television out of the bedroom and your life will change. Okay? So, breathing properly, Drinking enough water, eating quality food, getting proper amounts of sleep. What's number five? The fifth and final thing that you should add into your life for the year 2021, the year of new beginnings, would be to exercise. Now, the funny thing about exercise is, is when you do exercise appropriately and properly, all the other four will improve, okay? Your breathing will improve. Why? Because exercise requires you to breathe heavier. Diaphragmatic breathing. Imagine that. It's going to cause you to drink more water in an effort to rehydrate your body because of what you've sweat out from exercising. It's going to cause you to eat more food. And I can teach you by the end of this year, I will teach you how to eat more and lose weight. I will teach you how to eat more fat and lose weight. Stay tuned. We'll get to those later on in the year. Okay? But exercising helps us to breathe better, drink more water, eat quality food, and what was number four? Number four was get better quality sleep. When you exercise regularly, your body will be ready to put your head down on the pillow, close your eyes, and go unconscious. You will fall asleep better. You will get better quality sleep. You'll wake up in the morning feeling more refreshed and ready to go do what? Exercise. The best thing you can do is to exercise aerobically. Exercising aerobically requires you to burn fat for fuel. Exercising anaerobically causes you to burn sugar for fuel. Your brain primarily needs sugar. Your body primarily needs fat. If you exercise aerobically, your body will burn fat for fuel and it will leave sugar for your brain to function. That requires us to fix some other things which we'll get to throughout the course of the year. But for today, I'm interested in giving you the five basics. Proper breathing, proper amounts of water, proper amounts of food, proper amounts of sleep, and proper amounts of exercise. Incorporate one of those every week this year. So after the first month, when most people have already lost their New Year's resolutions, you have other things to incorporate. We want to breathe properly. That's belly breathing as opposed to chest breathing. We want to drink the requisite amounts of water, which is one quart of water for every 50 pounds you weigh every single day. We want you to eat quality food made by God, grown by nature, not the crap food that has a long shelf life. Stay away from those kinds of foods, okay? We want you to sleep. Quality sleep means no devices within three hours of going to bed so that when you put your head down, you're brain isn't swimming in thoughts about what you were looking at, etc. 
Oh, I can't sleep, Dr. Rick. Here's another piece of advice. Go buy an organic chemistry book. Crack that open to any page you want. And if you get through one page without falling asleep, then you'll probably learn something. But most people have no interest in organic chemistry, and it knocks them the heck out. Trust me, that will work, all right? You don't need Ambien, you don't need any of the other sleep aids. Organic chemistry does it every time. Last but not least, we want you to exercise. So those are the five steps that I want you to incorporate going forward in the year 2021. I want to thank you for tuning in. I want you to tune back in next week. Same health time, same health station. These are always going to be available, so it's whatever time you have. But make it, an, make it a priority for yourself. Now, I told those people early on, if you had questions, if you wanted to contact me, if you are a senior citizen that needs a, a breathing device in an effort to actually take in oxygen from your surroundings, please call me. My phone number is area code 845-561-2225. Again, 845-561-2225. Please do not text that phone as I do not receive texts and I will never respond to you. But you can email me at docrick, that's D-O-C, R-I-C-K at spineboy.com, docrick at spineboy.com. And if you want to get a jump start on uh, getting these newsletters more regularly, the, the printed forms, um, sign up for my free newsletter. You go to spineboy.com and click on uh, the first icon, I believe, the first choice that's on the website on the homepage is to sign up for my award-winning uh, free monthly newsletter or weekly newsletter. So please take care of that. And uh, I look forward to helping you throughout this year. Again, thanks for tuning in.